bit since I've been live, and welcome to all my live friends out there. And also, Yosef is a very good friend, and he's going live to your community. This might be the first time you're going live. Yes, it's actually, yeah, I've been, it's been, I've been live like in the past before, but it's one of the first times that I'm live with you, that's for sure. Excited to be here, excited to learn what you're going to share with me. So let's rock and roll. Yeah, so we are going to be talking today uh, about a topic that most people uh, haven't heard of. It seems odd because there's, I'm going to describe this in a second. I'm just going to share this screen, this chat GPT. So I uh, became fascinated with this when it was first announced a while ago. And the reason why is because I own um, probably 12 or 14 different chat uh, softwares, AI softwares already. Throughout the last two years, I go to AppSumo. I bought hundreds of uh, techno pieces of technology over there. But everyone that's, a, that's a AI for, uh, for writing, I buy. So <laughs> I've been really into this. And the other ones have been okay. And um, we use them. And, you know, we use them in my organization. We're creating content. Uh, we're creating a lot of content because we're working with people. Uh, we're a LinkedIn agency. We're helping with uh, creating outrageous content. We write uh, lead magnets and landing pages. And we create a lot of content. And also, um, so I started on this uh, chat GPT, kind of like someone said, hey, check this out. And I was blown away. I was blown away because it, it just changed the way you communicate. The other ones you put in like uh, a sentence says rewrite, it rewrites one little sentence. You've seen some of the other ones. So the reason why I named what we're going to talk about today, finally a technology revolution built for old and young people. So we're going to do this training, say you right, because you are, uh, share a little bit about your company. It's really cool. And uh, for the young people, because we want to create this training so it's in the portal, take a right. you know take a couple seconds and let's talk about that, and then we'll jump into the uh, Chat GPT. Absolutely, yeah. So thank you for the time. So ShareNest is basically a platform that it's for career development. So we get students at a young age, and we help them to identify really what they're passionate about and take them to you know application. We're all about learning through application. So right from the beginning once they understand a little bit more through different you know assessments that we do in them what could be a potential career for them we help them to build their first project and the unique thing about the way you help them to meet the project is we're not only helping them to build a company in this process but we help them to look inside and understand who they are as individual but also to look at the world and figure out what are the major problems of today's society, of your community, and how can you come up with a solution? How can you bring value to what you do in it that it's not only just to make money, but it's also good for people and for the planet? So through this process, we're actually helping students to add their first meaningful activity to the resume and giving them the edge to know more clearly really what they want to do in the future. Awesome. So what I uh, thought would be super fun, I'm going to share my screen again, is um, to, uh, I, so this morning I got up at uh, five and I started um, doing the due diligence and putting together the information for this presentation. And as I started to get into it, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to create a polished presentation on chat GPT to cut and paste this out and put it on my canvas slides. I mean, it might be a little slicker than what I'm about to show, but it would lose some of the impact because I don't just want to talk about chat GPT, about what it is. You, you know what? You can ask chat GPT what it is. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. I don't even say Google it anymore because if you Google it, this is really one of the scary things for Google. If you Google what is chat GPT, watch. We do this. This is the fun thing about this, right? Now I'm going to say, what is chat gpt now this is the the world that's dominated our life for the last uh what it came out in like i don't know early 2000s called 20 years this is google right what is chat gpt boom <clears throat> so what do i have <clears throat> i have a chat gpt competition that's first spot jasper that was the first one of the first ais 
using an old software and they got funded and someone paid, give them $68 million, which today looks like a pretty bad investment. Maybe not, but they're buying this spot. So is this going to be good information for me about what is chat GPT? Probably not. This open AI is actually, it's the software. So you can go to the actually answer directly from the software, which is one option. And then as you go down, you'll start to see that, okay, here's CBS News, uh, Wikipedia, ZD, ZDNet. Then you actually, Google pushes you to, uh, um, to YouTube. So what is uh, ChatGPT, uh, the Hindu YouTube? What is ChatGPT, the AI software taking the internet by storm? This is, I don't even know. The point is that, We've lived with this as the solution, meaning that I put something in there. We're like, oh, for 20 years, oh, this is great. Google's scouring the globe and it's going to give me this. But now what I need to do is I need to be pretty intelligent to figure out what I want to click and what I don't want to click just to finally get the answer of what actually it is. So that's the old way. And you're going to say, okay, well, what's the new way? If we go to chat GPT and hopefully it is working, and I'll create a new chat. And then, of course, we're asking ChatGPT, what is ChatGPT? Oh, see this? Verify with human. Do not lock me out. Okay. So if you go here to ChatGPT, and you put in what is ChatGPT, and you hit enter, now it actually is going to tell you what is ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is a large language model developed by OpenAI that uses machine learning to generate human-like text. It is trained on a data set of billions of words and can be fine-tuned for a specific task, such as language translation, question answering, and text summarization. It can be used in a variety of applications, including chatbots and natural language processing. So where this excels is basically giving you a straight answer. <laughs> Right, it, it it just gives you the answer. Now, it's only data has been only updated to 2021, so there there this is a work in process. The uh, Elon Musk is around involved with this company. I forget the guy who was the the founder. Uh, Microsoft gave him one billion dollars uh, back a few years ago. I think they're going to invest another ten billion dollars, and it will evolve to okay. It's not 2021 data. It's recent data. Right now, it's not connected to the internet. So it's not going to give you news. So if you say like this, what uh, happened yesterday? Right? It's going to tell you, I don't, I'm not, I'm a language model. I'm not hooked up to the internet. My cutoff's 2021. So there, there is some limitation. So it's not a, a Google killer as it is today. But if you were going to want to find out uh, really great information that you just you wanted the answer to the to the question, then this watch you give me a question, Siggy, that you want to answer to. A question: How can I use GPT Chat GPT for my business? I forget about that one because I don't want to go oh. to GPT into GPT. Like uh, no, oh. like uh, think of something. Uh, Give me a, like a tennis. Give me a tennis question because you're a professional okay. tennis player. Who, who won? Who who won the U.S. Open last year? Okay, last year. Well, no, because it only goes to 2021. Oh, 2020. Let's put. It Why don't we ask who who has the most? Um, um, who, who won who, the most number of Australia Opens in in history? Who won the most Australian? Opens. Okay. Good question. So there you go. Instantly. Look at the data. Novak, 2, 8, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 19, 20, 21. Actually, you would have won in 22, too, if they didn't uh, do the whole COVID thing. And then Margaret Court. Wow, Margaret was crushing it. So the point is if we did the same thing in uh, Google. So, and we say, okay, because this is normally what you would do, or you would say Siri. By the way, when we speak to Siri and we also speak to uh, Alexa, they're you this they're using AI. Like this is so what we're 
um, experiencing is it's not actually new. The the amount of data and the way that they've been able to serve it to us in a way that we're able to interact with it is really new. So then you we put this in who won into into um, YouTube. Novak Jonek, one of Australian Opens, 10th major. And then, of course, we've got all this other stuff. Then you can click, you can click this to get the details. And then you're going to get, you know, ads. This is going to be YouTube stuff, sports, CEDA, Statistica. You know, and what happens with a lot of these, like Bleacher Report, you know, you click on this and they're getting, their Bleacher Report's going to get paid because they have ads. Right, so th this whole methodology. Watch Bleacher Report. I clicked, um, okay, Bleacher Report. I'm on their account. I've, most of these sites will have ads here that will show that they'll also get paid. But now here, I'm guess I'm just um, sports news inbox. So they're going to try to get your email. To, so they can market to you. Um, so that's basically how it works. It's and they're gonna have a exit pop to try to get your email here. So this 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 game, which has been around for twenty years, is built based on ad revenues. Great computers that Google put together to like search the globe and come up with information at our fingertips, but it's corrupt. It can be gamed in the sense that people are always trying to game Google to get listed in the top 10. Keywords, dumping, stuffing this, all this kind of stuff. This, at this point, when we do chat GPT, is basically going through this basically uh, 2 billion data sets, billions of data sets of words that can be consumed to be able to create answers for us. So is that interesting in terms of difference between what exists and where we're headed absolutely it's incredible now maybe you can like in very short sense explain what is artificial intelligence yeah that's or maybe ask chat gpt to do it for us very yeah quick. um watch this and now so let's go into another concept with chat gpt so I said this is a technology revolution for young people and old people. Now, all technology revolutions are for young people because old people, we suffer. <laughs> I'm old people now. You know, I have a, a nice phone. It's one of the latest Samsungs. But if they change the entire operating system on this thing for like two days, I'm like all thumbs, you know? Um, and if I was going to switch from this to a, an iPhone, I would be like for a week, all thumbs. Learning new technology is not easy. So every time there's a technology revolution that takes place, the young people, they're, they grew up on it. My little guy, I mean, like, you know, the, phone, the things that he's doing at like a four and a half are just, it's uh, organically, they're, everyone's growing into this. Now for old people, we didn't grow into this. So we have to keep learning. And no one, when something's new, it's hard. Why is this? <clears throat> How can I make a statement? This is a technolo technology, technology revolution for young and old people. Are you curious about why I say that? Absolutely. Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it on. So the way this system works, chatopenai.com, is based on this box down here. This box is a prompt. And let me just also move us out of the way, so I'll move us over there. Let me see. Try to get us more out of the way. I think over here is good. So this, um, okay, that's better. So this box down here where my mouse is, is, is the place where you type in. So you will type in what you want to know. But in order to get this to really excel, you match what you want to know with what they call an AI prompt. An AI prompt is actually how we communicate with AI to help AI give us back what we want. So if we just say, okay, um, 
explain um, AI, right? Yeah. Simple. Explain AI. Watch this. So AI, or intelligence, is a simulation of human intelligence machines that are programmed to think and learn like humans. There are many different types of AI, but some of the most common include reactive machines. These are AI systems can only react to the current situation and don't have the ability to remember past. Limited memory, these systems remember the past experiences and use them to learn and inform the future. Theory of mind, the AI systems can understand and simulate the thoughts. And self-aware, these AI systems have a sense of self uh, and self-consciousness. Okay, this is very in-depth. So then let's just basically say what, um, explain chat GPT AI. Okay, because we're really one about this. this <laughs> okay, chat GPT is a type of AI called a language model. It is trained to generate human-like text by analyzing a large data set of text. It uses a deep learning technique called transformer architecture which allows the model to understand the context and relationship between words in a sentence. The model is fine-tuned for specific tasks such as language translations, questions answering, text summarization. ChatGPT can, uh, can generate a wide range of text from simple response to complex. One of the main uses of ChatGPT is building chat bots, which are AI-powered systems that can hold natural-sounding conversations with humans. So we're using ChatGPT in the chat bot. So when I asked this question, I had little or no control of what it was going to spit back to me, right? I asked an a AI machine, what is chat? What is AI? It gave us a whole bunch of stuff. Then I was like, all right, we've got to fix that. What is uh, chat GPT AI? Right? We, we crafted our message. And then it gave us this. But this is so a shit ton of information, right? Absolutely. So I'm going to say, what is chat GPT in two sentences or less. GPT is a large language model developed by OpenAI that uses machine learning to generate human-like text. It's trained on a data set of billions of words and can be fine-tuned for specific tasks, language translations, questions answering, and text summarization. Maybe ask how to how to explain ChatGPT to a five year old kid or something like that. To a ten. Oh, we were going to do that. That's a perfect uh -huh. thing because you're right in line with what we're covering right now. So uh -huh. what I'm doing is slowly I'm learning how to communicate with ChatGPT AI. Because first I said, "What is AI?" Oh my God, it's crazy. Too much stuff. What is ChatGPT AI? Oh my God. It's still like a long page. And then I said, all right, give me it in two sentences. Right? But still, we want to say, okay, explain chat GPT um, to a two-year-old is not going to work. We need to, uh, let's just say a, a sixth grader. Right? So here I'm, I'm further narrowing my prompt. So we're still saying, explain uh, <clears throat> chat BGBT, um, we want to keep it consistent, AI, right? But now I am taking control because I'm directing the computer, <clears throat> the AI, what to do. So that's what it says. ChatPG is a computer program that can understand and write sentences like a human. It can be used to talk to people through a computer and make it seem like it's a real person. <clears throat> Great job. Let me know if there's anything else. Uh, yes. Uh, explain to that child the... Uh, the simple uses of chat GPT, right? So now we're going to still in the context of a six-year-old. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Right? Can be used to make a computer talk to you like a person, can help you with your homework, answer your questions, and even tell you jokes. It's also used to make chat bots, which are computer programs, can talk to online and help you with things like ordering food or buying clothes. ChatGPT is also used in some video games to make the characters talk more like uh, real people. Overall, ChatGPT is a powerful tool that makes it easier for computers to understand and communicate with humans. <clears throat> That's pretty incredible. Now watch this. 
explain ChatGPT to a Python programmer who is hearing about it for the first time and give programming examples. So what happens. ChatGPT, a pre-trained transformer-based language model developed by OI. It's a based on GPT, generative pre-trans trans training transformer architects, fine-tuned for a variety of language. You jump in Python, you can use OpenA library, which provides a simple API for interacting with the model. Here's an example how to use ChatGPT to generate text. It's literally writing the code <laughs> in Python. It's amazing. So it, it, it does write code. I don't want to spend so much time talking about how this write codes because I wish I grew up as a coder, but I didn't. But now I can because <laughs> I, can, I can write code. But look at this explanation. So what is the difference? This is such a crucial point. This is why this is a technology revolution for the young and for the old. And I'm going to come to that and finish that open loop in a second. By the way, when I say I'm going to close that open loop in a second, do you know what that means? That's a copywriting term. Oh, really? Yeah. So look at what, what? this thing is doing. This is really... Um, you can stop, this? I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, stop jenning. <laughs> Okay, so, so here's the idea, okay? What I have done, going back up this, this, this thing here, is I've basically refined how I am communicating with the API, the AI, and I am literally instructing it like a friend or a child I wouldn't say a spouse because they don't listen to anything you say, but a friend or a child. <laughs> well, my child doesn't listen to anything I say either. Okay, maybe like a friend, <laughs> a dog. <laughs> it's like a dog. Maybe this is why I love this AI so much. <laughs> <laughs> I found a new friend that listens to anything I say. <laughs> and it never gets tired. It just keeps pumping this stuff out. Anyway. The uh, what we're doing is we're 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 learning how to get better at communicating to this, so we're not going to just get us so much fluff. We're going to actually get the output that we want. So this learning, what we're learning, what we're learning is um, explain at GPT. Uh, prompts. They call it a prompt. They're going to give me probably the right language for this, um, but it's called a prompt. A prompt is a piece of text that's used to input into uh, to a language model like ChatGPT. The model that gener generates text-based prompt, which is called a response or the completion. The prompt can be a simple sentence, a question, a statement, a keyword, or a full-fledged story. The prompt is used to guide the model understanding the context. Prompts can be used for various tests, such as text generation, text completion, question answering, language translation, text summarization. Prompts can be created and fine-tuned to provide things that are useful for you. Okay, let's just let it finish out. So the idea that I is crucial to, to really understanding the power behind this and, and why this is such a revolutionary technology, which I feel like this is as exciting as the launch of the uh, you know, the internet is because they, we are going to be able as, uh, as the users to actually begin to learn how to really cultivate better prompts to be able to get the more accurate, faster information out. That's going to allow us to do everything faster and better. So the beginning of this talk was like, how do you use chat GPT to make money? Well, you can make money by saving time, right? If, if it usually takes you two hours to do something and it takes you an hour, you make money. You can make money because the people you used to hire to do all this stuff, you don't have to hire anymore. Or you can make money by becoming such an expert at chat GPT or the next thing that comes out that you can you do this as a service. 
So I've spent probably now, ooh, what are you, I don't know, uh, between 100, more than 100 hours on this. And I keep learning, and it's, it's a learning process. But the key here is the prompts. So um, give, uh, give some examples. Oh, here, I'll do something that's funny. Rewrite this sentence. Give me a sentence, Joseph. Any sentence? Yeah, make up a sentence. I'm very excited to be listening to this class with Mike. Okay, now give me like a second part of this. Second part of it. I would like to learn eventually how to apply this to my business and different areas of my life and how I can master this technology as an early adopter. Master this technology uh, as well? And uh, I would like to learn eventually to apply this, how to apply this to my business and my life and figure out how to master this technology so as a, as an early adopter. Okay. So one of the great things, um, one of the great things that, that basically I've got 52 people working in my organization from all over the place. And basically we had training at the, um, the last global meeting. And I said, it's mandatory. Everyone learns this. Because I don't want any emails going out to any leads, prospects, or clients, or anybody. Anyone, any lead emails going out unless it goes through ChatGPT. Why? Because you don't have to have perfect English to drop it in here, right? So technology is not spelled right. I say rewrite this sentence. And the sentence really isn't a great written sentence, right? So, But if I say rewrite this sentence and I say hit enter, then... I'm thrilled to be in this class with Mike. My goal is to learn how to implement this technology in my business and personal life and become a proficient user. Wow. That's a pretty damn good sentence. Like that sentence will get you far. But say, Yosef, you're like a, um, a humor guy. Okay? Rewrite this sentence again with humor. You're a humor guy, right? You want some humor. I was thinking of a, thinking of something. I'm beyond excited to be sitting with Mike with, in this class with Mike. I'm pretty sure the class is going to be the highlight of my week, and I can't wait to figure out how to use this tech to make my life better. I might even become an early adopter, and that is a, a title I'm willing to wear with pride. Okay? Okay? Now, wait a second. You are a voracious reader. And you want to write, like, um, rewrite this sentence uh, as if you are a Pulitzer um, Prize winner. That's the award for, like, the, you know, the best, best writer. All right? Now let's see what you got. Ah, digging deep now. Hmm. As a Pulitzer Prize journey winner, I'm honored to be in the presence of esteemed educator Mike <laughs> as we delve into this intellectually stimulating class. My aspirations are to master the intricacies of this technology and apply this applying its principles to both my professional endeavors and my personal affairs solidifying my position as a trailblazer in its implementation. Wow. <laughs> so this goes back to being able to understand 
how to communicate with the AI to get what you want. It's, it, this is the prompting. Now, I did say I was going to come back to this to close the open loop. And then I was like, okay, well, most people don't know what an open loop is in a sales copy. So before I close the open loop, which I'm doing it again, this is, a, 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 this is really quite funny that I'm able to open and keep this open loop open until I close the open loop. But now I'm going to talk about chat GPT. Tell me what is a open loop in sales copy writing. Give me an example of an open loop. Tell me uh, the brain science behind open loops and why they are effective. Oh, you want to know this? Absolutely. This is this is good. So watch this. An open loop is a sales copywriting and it's a technique used to capture the reader's attention by introducing a question, problem, or a gap in information that needs to be filled. This creates an emotional tension that compels the reader to keep reading to find the answer or the solution. The idea behind open loops is that the brain is wired to seek closure and satisfaction. And open loops trigger the brain's desire to complete the information that is missing. For example, an open loop in a sales copy could be a question like, are you tired of losing money on your investments? Or a statement like, imagine being able to retire 10 years earlier than you planned. This creates a gap in the reader's mind that they will be more likely to keep reading to find out how to solve the problem or achieve the imagined outcome. The brain science behind open loops is related to the way our brain processes information. When we encounter a gap in a missing piece of information, our brain activates the seeking asylum, which is related to the release of neurotransmitted dopamine. Dopamine is associated with the motivation, pleasure, reward, and it creates an emotional tension that compels us to seek the missing information. Open loops are effective in copywriting because they create an emotional connection with the reader, making them Read them more engaged and might want you to take action. They also make the text more memorable, and the brain tends to remember information that's incomplete. The brain tends to remember that information that's incomplete. By using the open loops in your sales copy, you can increase the chance of capturing the reader's attention, making them more interested in your product or service, and ultimately leading to more conversations. Oh. It's huge. So the title of the presentation was the, a technology revolution for finally a technology. Finally is a key word. That's a powerful word. Finally, a technology revolution for uh, old and young people. So then I said in a moment, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i share why it, this is for old people. But this has now been going on, I don't know how many minutes, 33 minutes we're into it. So I keep opening the, and go opening and opening the loop. Now, it's very important that you close the loop because you don't want to leave an open loop. But through this process... Any, anyone or all of the people that have been following or watching us are all in the same position saying, hey, open loop, what, da, 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 whatever it might be. So why is this a technology revolution for old people? It is a technology revolution for old people because old people have wisdom. So you're going to say, well, what, what how does wisdom, how does wisdom have to do with anything we're talking about with this AI? How does wisdom have anything to do with it? I'm going to open that up. How does wisdom have to do with it? Like I just, we just went through a pretty, pretty good example of <clears throat> what this does and how this does this. <clears throat> Where do you think wisdom comes in? I think the way obviously you're going to ask the chat, right? How the chat is going to work for you, how you want the prompt to respond. That's one. And I don't know if I'm going the right direction there. You're going the right that's, direction. That's, well, uh, that's how it comes, right? And I think you, um, the more uh, precise you are with really what you want to get from the technology, the best result you're going to get out of it. So that so takes, you, that takes, 
Yeah, you you hit it right on the head. So I did a um, Agora Financial, uh, a great company. I did a little project for those guys back a few years ago. I learned a lot about them. They're um, a good part of Agora Inc., some of the best copywriting people in the world. They have something called the big idea, which is uh, a part of their philosophy. So I spent, you know, two hours going through doing some research on the big idea. And what I began to realize is that if you take two people, and this is why I really think this is a technology revolution for the old people. You take someone that's, and it, like, I don't want to age discriminate because anytime you discriminate now, anything, you know, if I just say, let's take an example of my left hand versus my right hand, I'm going to get yelled at because I'm discriminating against lefties or righties or wherever I pick first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Fuck all that, right? Anyway, so let's just go age because there's an easy way to disseminate between the difference of wisdom, right? Because just naturally speaking, someone that's 22 that's coming out of college, like like me, when I was coming out, I, I knew a lot about what they taught me there, but and a lot about drinking beer, but very little uh, really about, uh, let's just call um, the big idea in copywriting. N didn't know about it. It's not taught in college. So if then I was like, okay, let's, let's use chat GPT to not even create something that could be used for the, like some, like a, say an ebook for someone to learn, but to be used as a tool for, for me, or I'm comparing this to like, say someone that was 50, that's done some copywriting, like what you would be able to use as these prompts, because we just saw how these prompts work is night and day. And this is why the advantage initially is going to go to the old people with the wisdom because you like when you're thinking, you see things, you experience things, you you've used different strategies and tactics and applications of things that have worked and didn't work. So when you're in the prompting mode, you are actually literally able to take this journey with the AI in a completely different place than someone with less wisdom. Let's call it that. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, and it would make sense, like a, maybe a, a more black and white example is you see, speak Portuguese. If I knew five sentences of Portuguese and I try to use chat GPT in, in Portuguese, I could get it to, you know, take me to, you know, uh, the beach, the, the 10 words I know, take me to the beach. How do I get a cab? What's the conversion rate? I could do a lot of things with that. Right. But I couldn't do anything else. But because Portuguese is your language and you have experience with it, you could do any everything. So this is why I like I my mission is really now to become a, a leader in this this space because I, I believe in this. I've been using the AI writing stuff for a couple of years already, but it's going to be a leader uh, for AI, you know, for this AI and the Chat GPT stuff for old people because I want to empower people that are just like, oh shit, nah, not another thing. You know, there is um, a diagram. This There's another software that they have that does diagrams. But this diagram, I'm going to share my screen again to show you where we are on the uh, early adopter curve. And it's kind of interesting. Uh, diagram of early adopter curve in... Technology. Like the only way I know about this is because I'm old. <laughs> right? I mean, that's the, that's the reality. If I'm 22, I, you know, I probably don't know about this. Um, so let's just go to images. And where is one that's like easy to see and understand? This one is, this is fine. Um, I, I want to just look at this one here so you, you can you can kind of see it. But it has it broken down. It's like a bell curve, a normal bell curve. But the early adopters, 
the innovators are like two and a half percent. So these are like the people probably right now that are on chat GPT. It's such a tight, like if I'm on you know, Zoom calls with amazing smart people every day. And the vast majority of the people, unless they're in tech or in, in like copywriting or marketing, haven't heard of chat, chat, chat GPT yet. Yeah. The early adopters have. Early adopters, that's all the way up over here now. We're still in like the innovators. So it's so early right now. And like we're so far away from like, you know, my parents knowing about this. Like, you know, so the point is, is that we're we're extremely early. I think it's a huge opportunity for, you know, basically for one, you know, what you're doing with uh, with the kids, you know, um, we're going to take this recording and and put it in the, the platform for your your programs. And I think that's uh, awesome. You know, wh- one of the things uh, that I'm very passionate about, as you know, is education and client engagement academy. We build online education courses. <clears throat> but my entire thing since we started six years ago is simple. It's learn and do. Without the application of information, you're a little better off than you were with the information it's the application and that's what's great about your program because you're 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 teaching kids entrepreneurial stuff but then you're having them do the projects right and get out there in the real world and get mentored and so i think this presents such a big opportunity for you to figure out um, because it's easy like like you know junior high school kids high school kids they'll get this but it really can empower them you know they don't have that wisdom, they're never going to be able to compete head to head using AI against someone with wisdom, but there's so much stuff that they can do that, you know, uh, three months ago, they they would have taken a long time, if ever, to, to do the things that we'll, they'll do. We don't even know what they're going to do. Yeah, I'd be curious to see, though, how schools uh, accept, you know, chat DPT because of like plagiarism and all that. I mean, eventually it's going to be everywhere, right? I think they will have to accept it. It will be very interesting to see the curve. Yeah, here's a comment from um, uh, Josiah. How do you wrestle with the degradation of the learning of, uh, of our society? That's putting us further and further behind in the world. Most want to have answers here and now and not actually learn themselves is a looming concern, letting a bot cheat for you. <laughs> that's what I just said. Yeah, similar. Yeah, I mean, look, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think... This type of question has been going on for a while. I mean, it went, I faced it, oh man, I don't know, 19, I graduated in 1986. I faced a question because I went to a liberal arts school and there were other schools that like Babson College that had a great entrepreneurial program and still does. They, they literally, you go there and you'll learn how to start a business and go do business. The theory behind I went to Union College, a liberal arts school, is that they you're not going to learn so much that you can apply unless you're like a pre-med or engineer, but you're going to learn how to think. And that was the like the power behind liberal arts is you're going to learn how to solve and figure out shit for yourself. Okay, so I think that is going to really be the the new challenge as educators is that this is not cheating because you're just talking about, okay, when we had the encyclopedia, we had to go to the library and even the library books were in those stupid cards and then they weren't even in the right places. You used to walk around a library for like an hour. And instead of getting four books, you wanted getting two and you get pissed off and you waste an hour of your life. Okay, then they put on a computer. So like, okay, instead of taking an hour, it took 30 minutes to get the four books. And then they, okay, Amazon, you know, got the four books and then I could just download them and then I had the four books. So it took, you know, 10 minutes. Am I cheating? And now instead of having the four, the go get the four books, I just got the information that's in the books in t- five minutes. <clears throat> and from many books, I'm not limited by my library. Is that cheating? I don't know if that's cheating. What we yeah, need to how you on, use it, right? We need to focus on, on teaching <clears throat> how to think and yeah. how to ask questions and 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 how to solve problems. 
No, no and, and I also think that the world is changing so much, right, that uh, a lot of the a lot of jobs are going to be automated and we're going to have to innovate ourselves and just be creative and you know how we can add value. Right. Because, you know, like you said, taking 10 hours to study something and come up with a computer and come up with an answer to it might not be necessary in today's society. In today's society, you go to a, you know, to a bot and the bot will give you the answer, right? So that's advanced, right? So if I'm a person that my pr profession is to be that, well, in today's world, this is not gonna exist. So you need to innovate, you need to do something different because, you know, so I think that- uh, Yeah, I mean, these are, these are definitely great questions. Um, the, it, it's kind of like, okay, when, I mean, <laughs> When you, you you have to adopt, you can't fight. Yeah. Like schools banning this, like whatever. You, you, you it's too it's too late to ban it. It's like, you know, when people we used to farm, but with with humans, only humans, and animals. That was it, farming. And then we created farming equipment. And then what happened to those jobs? Like yeah. if you fought it, you you the farm had a slow death, <laughs> and the people. But if you did it and you said, okay, I have to uh, adopt and, you know, whether you could, you know, utilize the, the people to do other things or not. I mean, that's one thing. The, the classic example is the music industry. You know, I, I, I just remember it so clearly when the first music sharing thing came out and all the music companies were the most arrogant, yeah. just I mean, they were ripping us off for years. They abused the artists. They were just, you know, despicable business people. Generally speaking, they were just, you know, all lawyered up. And all of a sudden, you know, music sharing came. And they just tried to sue everybody to death. <laughs> and they got, he was out of the bag. Like, digital music was out. You can't, like, you can't get it back in, you know? So, you know, this is huge. This is, I think this is a, as big as the invention of the internet. And 20 years, when the inter 20 years ago when the internet act came out, you had no idea. And I just saw something. It was like talking about that. The uh, original internet sites, like you got to see some of these. Watch. Um, they're so funny. Original... Yeah, like uh, yeah, like this over here is welcome to Apple. <laughs> you see this? Well, welcome I to. I don't Apple. see your screen. We don't see. Oh, your sorry. Screen. Let me share my screen. Yeah, top right. Welcome to Apple. How does that look for a website? <laughs> Okay, what about this? Um, I just lost it. Hold on. Uh, I just had... Uh, yeah, that's Yahoo. Oh, wait, what about this? That's Google. So the, uh, the Internet's come a long way. There was one from Microsoft that was just um, kind of crazy. Uh, so we don't know. So it's a good question, and it's a good conversation. Um, I don't think at this point we actually even know where we're headed yet. But I think the challenge is going to be we got to teach people how to think. Got to step in and say, okay, just got more access to more information. But like, how do you excel with that? Yeah, it's not cheat. Like, I mean, you can. Like, if you have, a I mean, you can. It depends how you use it, right? But it's obviously. Uh, if you use it in the good in good faith, right, to to actually help you to become a better individual, more knowledgeable, get more wisdom, or do things faster, and figure out a way that you can add more value to society, that's amazing. Now, if you're using it because you wanted to to do your homework, or using it because you want to tell the world that you wrote this amazing essay, but it wasn't really you, then you know, I think that's the the beauty of technology. You can always use it for the good or for the bad. It's a choice. And I think that uh, I see, like yourself, are like uh, crazy revolutions coming out of this. And, you know, but there's always going to be tests. And, you know, 
So let's see where it goes. Yeah. By the way, there's already a site that you can drop in any copy and it will tell you 99% chance was written by uh, AI. Yeah, but I believe there's a chat that then you can reverse it and the make sure it's very human. So. Yes. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah. all right. Well, I uh, really appreciate uh, the time, Yosef, and doing this yes. together. It was thank great. You so much. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, everyone, for joining and commenting. And I'm going to be a, a minimum of a couple of times a week now um, talking about the chat GPT. We're going to be bringing in people with, uh, well, with Yosef for next week. We're going to get into an application for his uh, school and we're going to build some stuff live. So if you're interested in uh, coming on and being a guest and building stuff live on LinkedIn or wherever else we're streaming, then uh, let me know. Send me a message on LinkedIn. Appreciate you. Yosef. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for the class. Hope everybody had a lot of fun and learned a lot as I did and see you next time.